Yo, what's good? It's Josh. Welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you 10 quick and easy ways to make your loops more interesting. Let's do it. Here's the loop we're going to be using today. Oh yeah, we about to fuck it up on guard. The first technique is to pitch and reverse different sections of the loop. I find that intervals like plus 12, minus seven, or minus 12 are good starting places. Also, when you chop up the loop, make sure to set these little fades so you don't get those click sounds. Mm. Maybe we could reverse this other part right here. The second technique is to mess with Ableton's warping modes. Three main ones I would focus on are complex pro, texture, and beats. I find that a lot of these work best when you pitch the sample, so let's do that right now. Go minus five. Notice how the tone changes when I change the format in the envelope. Oh yeah, that shit crazy. Oh my God. Another good one to mess with is beats. What I like to do is I like to change it to this right here, this little arrow thing. You can get some sort of syncopation in the loop, almost like a gated sound. This can be really cool to mess with. Another cool one to mess with is the texture and just mess with the grain size and the flux. It's a good way to get some really trippy type sounds, like really wavy, indie, acid type vibes, you know what I'm saying. Moving on to the third technique is to use the sample offset feature at Ableton. This is a slept on gem that I feel like a lot of people don't even know about. So what you want to do is you want to make sure to set your warp mode to beats, and then you want to go to this envelope tab, you want to go to clip, and then sample offset, and then you can just start messing around with it, creating these little shapes. Listen to what it does to the sound. If you want to get even crazier, you could do the clip transposition function in addition to the sample offset function. It's just like, whoa. Woo. Yo, I don't even know what that is, but that shit crazy. When you're doing this, I would mess with this preserve value and it'll give you different sounds. Moving on to the fourth technique is to separate certain parts and add different effects. What you would do is Command T, make a new audio track, and then just drag down certain parts of the loop onto a different channel. This is where you could affect them differently. Maybe throw some RT20. This is a way to just make your loops really dynamic sounding. Make sure to fade, get those clicks. Another thing I like to do is to filter it, maybe throw some distortion on it. So you could really go crazy, even add different layers, pitching it up. So pitch it up an octave. Oh yeah, that shit's sick. Now technique number five is to use a frequency shifter. You just get your frequency shifter. I like to mess with the fine a lot. A good place to start is on the ends of phrases. One bar phrases or two bar or even four. Also, if you want to curve your shapes, you would just highlight the section that you want and then you'd hold on option and you could just make a little curve. This is kind of emulating that gross beat kind of FL Studio type Bob. Oh my gosh, that makes me want to eat some chicken right now. That brings us to technique number six, halftime. Most of y'all probably already know this one. So if you do move on to the next one, but if you don't, I would highly recommend getting this plugin called halftime. It just does some like weird pitch kind of effects that just make your loop sound sick. Let me show you. Cool thing I like to do is mess with the mix knob. I also like to mess with this mode right here. Especially like sometimes putting it on this 1.5X setting, you can get something completely different. While you're doing all these techniques, always mess with the pitch so you can see if it sounds better in a different key. Technique number seven is to pitch the sample. It's always good to go through all these different pitches because one of those keys might really stand out to you and evoke a certain emotion that you like. Another cool thing to keep in mind when pitching is to pitch up or down an octave for different sections of the song. Let's say we have an intro part, we could use a pitched up 12 octave and then for the main verse, we could pitch it back down just to zero.
Oh yeah, just like that. The eighth step is to change the format. A plugin I like to use is Little Alter Boy for this, but you can also use plugins like Auto Tune as well. I'll start messing with the format and a lot of times use this mix knob to kind of adjust the amount that I want, just to give it a little bit of texture. As you can see, adding a little bit goes a long way. So I would recommend just using a little bit just to add some different texture to your loops. Now that brings us to technique number nine, which is to chop up certain parts and repeat them. A lot of times I'll work on the grid, maybe in 16th notes, but you can really go off grid, 32 second notes. And see, then you could even go off grid and do some weird like little glitchy stuff. Last and final technique, number 10, is using beat repeat. This plugin seems really complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Wherever these yellow boxes are, are where your beat is gonna repeat. And so right here, we have one measure, and you can change this by the interval. If I make it two bars, this entire section right here is two bars long. One, two, but 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 four. If I wanted to change that to one, duh, 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 I would move them over with this offset button. I'm gonna show you in real time how these parameters work. Make sure to really pay attention to what they're doing. And that's all for today, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. If there are any other video ideas that you want me to cover, make sure to let me know in the comments and yours might be the next one that I decide to record. Regardless, y'all keep vibing, making dope music. Have a great week. I'll see y'all next time. Love you.